Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group, and this is your market recap for Monday, the 26th. What a day for the cryptos. Uh, what a what a day for the uh, for the biotechs as well. Really, really strong moves uh, coming from that uh, from that group. And um, fast moves too. So if you participated in some of these groups, um, if you've been watching some of my recent videos and um, you know watching some of the content that we put out on uh, Substack, you know I think I had, um, you know I, I like to include and I, I, I send multiple notes out during the day, and I think. Um, my end of date note, what I basically do is put like one or two charts that I think are the most interesting of the day. And um, I think I actually featured biotech twice on one day because I just thought it was that interesting. Um, and that's something that, um, you know, I've been long now, so, you know, since the beginning of this year, I've been talking about how that chart was shaping up. So it's just nice just to, uh, you know, to put in that type of, uh, put in, put in that type of work and effort and uh, really see some of these trades work too. Um, Bitcoin as well, uh, you know, we saw really tight consolidation last week. I put on a Bitcoin trade last week, um, also had some exposure like indirectly with Robinhood, which I thought also was a really nice looking setup. And um, those things really turned out pretty well. So before I get into any of those risk disclaimer in front of you, everything that we're going through is for information purposes only, please read the full risk disclaimer right there. So um, let's get to a couple of the charts. Uh, but before I do, um, you know, a couple of things that stood out to me in terms of the macro. Um, let's see, I have to correct this a bit, but uh, TLT bounced back a little bit. It was down about six tenths of, of a percentage point. Um, so if you remember on Friday, bonds had a had a really nice rally day. Um, they were up, TLT was up around like 1.2%. So it gave back a little bit of that. I don't think that that's that uh, bad considering there's a lot of supply that's coming back on the market um, in the form of bond auctions. We had two bond auctions today. I think it was a two year and a five year. And uh, we're going to get more of them uh, throughout the week. And the Dollar, where did the dollar finish for the day? Uh, the dollar finished just down slightly, you know, down one uh, uh, 0 0.1%. So, um, you know, again, the, the continues to kind of, the dollar has been continuing to fade over the last couple of weeks. Remember about uh, two, three weeks ago, we saw some strength in the dollar, but that has basically gone away um, and has been bleeding out. Um, I thought what was interesting was the second day in a row, we've seen the, the not <clears throat> the small caps too, but the micro caps. Uh, up one percent, so even more so on the spectrum of you know your small micro caps, and you know what is that telling you right now about um, you know what yields are doing, right? You know yields kind of go sideways a little bit for a couple of days, and um, you know these things want to rally, so it's pretty interesting to me. Um, yes, blockchain. You know, I have uh, you know, what I refer to as the crypto ETF, uh, which has in it Mara, uh, Coinbase. Um, MSTR, right? Uh, it's, and I think Robinhood is in there too. Riot Blockchain, right? Uh, Clear Clear Spark, which had a huge day today. Um, so that ETF led today and was up six point eight percent. Outside of that, there was still some momentum in, in select, very select areas of the market. Software was up one percent for the day, which um, surprised me because I thought that that group was pretty weak last week. So it came back, and you're going to have a lot of reports this week in that software and cyber group, which cyber also did pretty well for the day. Very interesting. Uh, Nancy Pelosi added again, um, buying calls like uh, you know, <laughs> you know, like like a Robinhood trader, but uh, obviously bigger size. Um, pretty amazing to me buying, uh, you know, Palo Alto probably on, on the dip. Uh, but regardless, kind of interesting to see, um, you know, that's a pretty high conviction trade, similar to what we saw in NVIDIA, um, at the end of 2023. So, um, you know, very interesting to see, you know, it is what it is. We can get angry or we could profit, uh, in regards to, you know, they have information and we don't. And, um, you know, and they can trade on insider information. We can. Right. So very interesting to see. Uh, and I, I believe, too, I don't think that that cyber trade is done. And I was out there last week buying the dip and CrowdStrike, which was one of my best trades last week. And I bought a little bit of uh, CyberArk today, too. I like that chart as well. Also was looking at VRNS. So that said, let me get to a couple of these charts. We'll start with the with the big guy here, Bitcoin. Um, you can see I've got some arrows in here. Uh, this is actually, I, I like how TradingView lets you um, put out 
trade ideas. And I, this is a trade idea I put out last week. And um, I just liked how this was, let me zoom in here a little bit for you so that you can see, but I like this move, this rip higher. And like all it did was just very, very tight consolidation. So I threw on a trade last week um, using the uh, iBit ETF, right? Which is um, the ETF, one of the ETFs now that tracks Bitcoin um, rather than mess with the futures, which is what I'm looking at here. But, um, you know, and here's where the, this next move up, which it's nice that the that the market webs do this for you. They give you the percentage up, you know, of where there's the next resistance, or in this case, virgin point of control, where there was a lot of volume previously, where we have not revisited. So that's my ultimate price target is about 10.8% 10, 10 further. But I like to see that first move and a real nice first move. So we could go through some some of these charts, but um, I think the one that, that, sh that stole the show today was... Um, Make sure I've got stocks up here, right? Was this clean spark? What a what a move in this thing today, um, and all of the you know the whole group. But this one took out the highs. What I always look for is when you've got this you know consolidation back into let's say the five or the twenty day moving average, and you pop. You know which names got above the the previous highs, and I think this one was um, the most interesting of the bunch. Um, here's Mara, um, which again had a lovely day today. Um, up is that twenty one percent? Just huge, right? Some some of these what these some of these names did today. Um, MSTR also like right around those previous highs. Note that there was a VPOC over there. Um, Coinbase, which I know a lot of people trade that one, also kind of stalled out a little bit there at those previous highs. But you know these these names may not be done, right? And the one that I've been involved in, so I've been playing both um, both the underlying crypto. And also, you know, Robinhood had a real nice day. I mean, we noticed this back in January that the base just looked too good to be true. Um, and look at the little check back, by the way, right? So this started to go at the end of the at the end of the year, right? And a nice little neat check check back right to support, and um, you know, is is uh, is starting to kind of break higher here. Um, I think my next target, if I use the one hour chart, right, you're going to find some of these version point of controls, right? This is another one that's another 6% up, right? So that's your first VPOC that's coming up here and that's around 1658. So that's what I'm targeting. The next group that, I, that I've been positioning in this year is biotech. Um, and, a, and a couple of these positions I have on in two portfolios um, like XBI. So, Here's the daily chart in XBI um, getting out. I mean, this was one of the biggest days, I think, so far uh, of this year, or at least of this month. Um, we had this big move back here in the beginning of the year. Again, took a little bit of patience, right? And that's what you have to have. And, you know, when you like a nice looking chart and when you're either looking on the weekly chart, which I have been um, for XBI, you've got to have some patience. And uh, I know that's not easy to do because there's so many other things that are going on. There's earnings reports and, you know, big earnings reports going on. There's a lot of macro forces out there. But, um, you know, really, this just looked to me like it was a really good setup. And, um, you know, so I took another target um, today in this. I'll just bring up, uh, you can see by, by trades blotter. Um, I was all about taking targets today. Uh, you know, it was kind of carrying a decent amount of swing trades. So, you know, in there, this elf trade has been another one. Unbelievable <laughs> in terms of the, the move in some of these things. Right. Look at the extension. Um, you know, so today was up 7% today. Right. And um, if we go back to last week, I right, kind of saw this consolidation and it looked like it was trying. Right. And you know, there's a number of other names that are doing this too, that, that have not gone yet. But you see this consolidation and then bang, you know, up, up and uh, up and out or out and up. Right. Um, so, so very nice there. And I took another profit target in uh, my swing trade in Elf. Um, you know, other trades, I, I tried some NXT today. This was a name that I tried um, a couple of weeks ago. It's important to kind of, you know, have these names on your radar. And then if you trade them, um, I often will come back to them, right? And um, I ditched the rest of this trade today. Uh, so again, like sometimes I don't know if it's going to be a day trade or if it's going to be the start of a swing trade. It depends on how the stock performs. But I didn't like how it how it was kind of giving back gains in the middle of the day. So you can kind of see, um, you know, how I did this today. Um, took a target here. Took another target in um, 6040 and. 
Uh, let's see. And then I, I got out of the last portion of the trade for profits, you know, important to have trailing stops, right? So that you know when something is not acting as well. So where did this thing close? 59.55. So so further down from, from where I sold it. So I'll watch this name. You know, again, it's, it's you know, if you forget about where it hit intraday, um, it did get above all those short-term moving averages. So I still think pretty positive. Um, CPRT, right? Again, not probably on the top of a lot of people's list, but just going through charts this weekend, I right, just noticed that this team had um, kind of a delayed strong earnings reaction. And what you're looking at here is the value area for, for the year, right? So not only did it kind of find support on the, uh, this is the uh, value area for the month of February. So that held that pretty decently. And um, and now is breaking through its value area for the year. So I love when stocks do this personally, right? When you kind of um, you know go up like this, and you pause for a couple months, and you take your next leg higher, right? Darvis talks about this in in his book, right? And um, you know if you notice a lot of the the um, the um, the situations that we have for the market webs, right? You know, looking at valuers and so forth, right? It is, it is a similar approach that Darvis used, except we're putting stats behind it, right? We're not just randomly drawing boxes, right? These are all based on volume at price. But I like when something really lines up like this, and uh, this name is trying to take um, its next like higher. Now, I did take a target in this one. Again, just just being very, very methodical about what we're doing here, right? Um, Nucor was a name that we put on last week. I think in Friday's video, I probably talked about that. I can't remember, but I probably did, right? Just talked about how there was some strength, right? in some of the uh, steel names, um, STLD, I think had some news this morning too, right? This is a name that I also have on in the TTG trend portfolio. I don't have, S I have STLD on in one portfolio and I have Nucor on um, in another, both um, acting well. ATKR actually had a good name, I, even though this isn't exactly a steel name, but um, this one took out of Epoch over here too. I don't own this one, just was on my uh, radar for today. All right, and um what else do I, did I want to go over? You know, interesting. If you look at the performance, I, I was talking. I was just talking about biotech. Healthcare did not have that type of a day. And if you notice, what I did on Friday um, was I just thought it got a little bit of ext extended. You know, I was holding this XLV trade for a, a good few weeks, right? And I got out of this on Friday. I thought it was a little bit extended. So. Um, now I'll come. I'll go back into healthcare because I don't think that the trend. If we look at this weekly chart in XLV, healthcare trade, let it come in a little bit. This is a really nice breakout. You know, let it consolidate. Comes in maybe just you know another dollar. I'll probably be a buyer of this again, right? Um, you know, and the medical devices, right? That's another group that I've been talking a lot about. Didn't do much today, but that's okay. You know, so far, um, you know, I think it was actually declined a little bit today. Perfectly normal. Not every group is going to, you know, outperform. Going back to these sectors, um, if you notice what underperformed a little bit was the XLC. I, I tweeted this chart out over the weekend, right? How this took out, has taken out several VPOX, right? And is probably due for some digestion, right? Take a look at that on the weekly chart. That's a big VPOC to be taken out. So again, the two big components in XLC are Google, which we know got into a little bit of trouble with their AI situation and, uh, and Meta. So I think it's really healthy if the rest, if it doesn't have to be all of, you know, whatever they call them, the Magnificent Seven, you know, I think it's really good for these things to be kind of chilling out, right? And other areas of the market starting to pick up, right? We've talked about industrials, financials, right? Healthcare, right? And other things like, the, you know, the materials started to really work as well. So it's really, you know, a, a good market to, to be around. Now, of course, that could change on us and we want to continue to monitor. You know, at some point we're going to get more of a pullback. I think everybody knows that at this point, but phew, there is some good looking stuff that's out there. And to me, it's it's a much better situation than only, you know, a few stocks that everybody has all those attention on and let the media continue to do what they do and talk about, oh my God, it's only the Magnificent Seven. They're not doing the analysis. They're not doing the research. Uh, <clears throat> we're doing it here and we're finding the trades. So very um, happy about that. Let me talk a little bit about the indices. And by the way, a couple, couple other names too that reported after the close. Like look at what Trex is doing, right? So, you know, 
I've I've liked these flooring companies. They've acted very well. You know, companies that are that are you know, if there's a, there's this argument right now that people are not buying new houses, well, they're certainly maintaining them. Um, and the flooring companies have been on fire. So Trex just reported good earnings, right? This is after AZEK, which I got in, I got back into last week, right? Now I did take a profit target at this VPOC, but perhaps um, the strength can get through here. One other company too is MHK, which might be setting up here too. Notice how this is just sitting at the top of value. All right. So um, I'm going to move on um, and I'll talk a little bit about the indices. Right. Um, so S&P futures. Right. There's not much, you know, on this daily chart. Right. And I, I've talked about this a couple of times, but there's not much to be that critical about. Right. With with the S&P futures, we're above all the short term moving averages. Um, if you want a closer view, you could look and see if you can get a clue off of, you know, what might be shorter term price action. Um, notice what's going on here on the one hour chart. Right. <clears throat> this is something that I pointed out pre market to members as well as on my sub stack is that you might have the making of a little bit of a head and shoulders pattern here. Right. Left shoulder, head right shoulders. So again, you're not going to see that on the daily chart. That's why I do go to the one hour chart because I am trading in the short term as well, right? Not just longer term swing trades, right? And I think that we could see a check back to the top of value. Now, when I pointed this out on Twitter earlier, it was a little bit more than a half a percent. But the, the good thing is we don't have far to go to support. So I would be interested to see if we have a little bit more weakness overnight, what we do at that top of value, which is 5066, right? Now, if we break that, Right. Then the next thing I would be watching is this line that's coming in here, which is the 200 period moving average. We often find some support there if that's broken. So it's good to kind of map this out a little bit and realize where there's support using volume at price and also using a moving average. Right. And um, again, what looks different um, today was what IWM did today. Right, a little bit stronger. Notice it didn't really pull back there at the end of the day. Lost a little bit of its momentum. Um, again, and you're you're going to need a little bit stronger breath to kind of confirm this too. Um, so we'll see if that materializes. But um, I think in the at the very least, you could shoot for this um, two o two seventy seven VPOC, which is about one percent up. Right, and keep in mind, right? I'm not making any claims here about IWM because it's been very, very sideways. So yes, I would be taking some if I was long, which I'm not right now. IWM, I would be taking a good, a healthy profit target at that version point of control there because that's how the small caps have been trading. All right, that's it for today's um uh, video. Like I, you know, I was of course like I put on uh, the watch list, like I put on Nvidia just to kind of watch some some of these names. You know, I it's important to kind of keep an eye on some of these names. You know, here's our watch list and I think I have Nvidia on here. I said good to keep it so I'm repeating myself. Good to keep an eye on. I want to see it digest, consolidate. Let all that hot money kind of, you know, wash away a little bit. Right? And some of the other names too. That's actually a good thing, right? Some people just want things to continue to go up and up and up, right? If you've been doing this for a while, you want to see some consolidation and backing and filling, right? So let this kind of back and fill a little bit, right? That's my thought on that one. Guys, have a great night. See you tomorrow.